So we're going to do a install on my truck. If you're not into ham radio, you're probably not going to have a very good time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be an interesting install because Mike gets to put an antenna on his truck permanently mounted. Right, I'm going to drill a hole in the roof of my new truck. So. Uh, some people like to, like to watch the install videos, some people don't. So if you don't want, like install videos, you don't like ham radio, bye. <laughs> <laughs> But for those of you who are sticking around, thank well, you. Well, we can show the latest addition to the truck. Oh yeah, we haven't shown that yet. You put a cap on the truck. Dun, 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 dun. Now, I, I researched other brands, you know, looking for reviews and stuff. This is an ARE cap. It costs about nineteen hundred dollars. I found an equal amount of positive and negatives across the board for whatever brand you choose. Yeah. This dealer was the closest to us, so that's, that's why I went with ARE. Right. Uh, we got the, the windows that open on both sides, and you know this will slide open, so you have a, some ventilation. So that's kind of nice. Yeah. So it's screened in. Yeah. And I could have went with the extra height on the cap. So I wanted, I was thinking about getting something with a little rise to it, but if you look, I wouldn't have been able to get into our garage right. with any extra rise because we've got just a couple inches. I think it looks better. A couple inches of clearance here, so. Yeah, we definitely wouldn't have been able to fit in here with it on. Yeah, and I thought about, you know, parking garages too. That's true, yeah. So at least now we can keep our firewood dry and... I can put camping stuff in the bed of the truck. Yeah. It just stays there now. There's some stuff that's just in there permanently now. All right, so the radio I have is an ICOM 5100. This has been installed, this might be the third time it's been installed in a vehicle of I mine. I think so. The antenna I chose is a Comet. What is it? I actually bought a brand new one. This is the one I was using. This is a Comet CA2X4SR. It's a dual band, wide band antenna. This one was fantastic, so I, I bought the same one again. But the reason why I bought a new one is because this antenna folds over. Which is convenient for parking or what have you. This one is supposed to also <laughs> fold over, but it won't. It's never done it's it. It's never done it. So I decide just to get a new one and I'm going to give this one away to a buddy of mine. So I guess the first step is to decide where I want to install the radio. And then I'll install the antenna because the antenna mount that I'm using is an NMO mount, so I have to drill a hole in the roof of the truck. So I'll figure out where I'm going to put the radio, get the power wired to it, and then, then I'll decide where to put the antenna. So being that this radio has a remote mounted head, you know, the body of the radio has got to go somewhere, I kind of want it to be out of sight. Right now, I got a CB radio that's just like sitting loosely on the floor. After we do our Wisconsin trip, that's all coming out because I hate how it's just cluttered there. Right. So, I think I'm going to remove this center console. There's like it looks like four bolts that hold it down to the floor. I'm just going to take those bolts out, lift the whole thing out, and maybe I can mount the radio under there so I won't even have to see it. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled that center console up, and there's like a box under there with electrical connectors and stuff in it. It was kind of taking up the space I'd used to mount the radio, so I just put the four bolts back in. Now this is all the bigger that you know the radio itself is, but I do want to make sure I have access to the SD card and there's the microphone input and the input for the remote head. So I think the next best thing is just to mount it underneath the passenger seat, sort of, sort of like where it's sitting there. It's out of the way, it's out of sight, and I still have access to all the connectors. And I can yeah. still easily pull that SD card out if I want to reprogram the radio. So I'll probably just put it there. Yeah, I think that's a good place for it. Yeah. And I do have a tendency to trade trucks in fairly often. 
So. Uh, let's hope we keep this one a little so, bit longer. The easier it is to uninstall, the better off I'm going to be. True. Okay, so I know I'm going to put the radio under the seat, so I have to run this power wire. Now this wire has to run from the radio to the battery. So I just pulled this, this trim piece out. There's no screws or anything. Just yank it out of there. Well, I don't want to say yank it out. But yeah. Pull it out gently. It's got little clips and stuff that hold it. So now I can pull up the carpet. And right here is a plastic plug. That's factory. So mm -hmm. I think um, the, the best, easiest way to do this, I'm just going to drill a hole in that plastic plug and run the wires under the truck to the engine bay then up to the battery. I'd rather drill through that plastic plug than drill through the floor. Yeah. Because if I ever want to re remove it, I could probably get a new little plastic plug. I don't even know what it's called. Somebody probably knows. I'm sure we'll be notified. <laughs> Somebody will notify us what that plastic plug is for or what it's called. But I'd rather drill through that than the steel. If I, I drill through steel, it's just going to invite rust. So here's the battery. So I have to get the wires from under the truck up to here. I want to make sure I keep it away from the exhaust. <laughs> Not that I know from experience. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> just common sense. Yeah, just a little common sense. So I'm probably just going to try and go underneath, use some zip ties to kind of hold it up out of the way, get it up here to the battery. Luckily, I already, from my previous installations, I already um, put the connections on that I need to connect it to the battery. So this should be... This should be easy. Hey, that was successful. Now I just got to zip tie it in place so it's out of the way. Oh, it was much easier than I was thinking. Yeah, it's, it's really not bad. There's already a wiring harness that runs down there. You know, it's wire loom. Probably just zip tie right to that, follow the same path. What happened? I didn't want to get dirty doing this. <laughs> I used to be filthy up to my elbows constantly working on stuff and I'm over it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so got the wiring connected to the batteries. I got it where it came up to the floor here. And then I just used my arm and I pushed that wire up here. There's an opening in the carpet back here. Yeah, way under the seat. There's a yeah. So I, I pulled it through. So the radio, I'm just gonna leave like this for now until I make all my connections on it before I mount it to the floor. So here's the remote head that's gonna mount the windshield. And then I've got, this is the wire that plugs into it, runs to the radio. There's quite a bit of it here. Still all taped up when I had it coiled together for my last installation. So we'll, we'll see how we're gonna do this. So there's quite a bit of wire here it just plugs into the side now I do have other options to mount it because this is just magnetic on this plate hmm. but I'm strong I could just mount this plate somewhere but there isn't there's literally nowhere convenient to put it in this truck nowhere yeah. I was thinking maybe up here somewhere I got this thing here in the center but I'm just drawing a blank, so I think I'm just going to use the suction cup mount. I mean, if you change your mind or find a place in the future, you right? Can it's going it. to be kind of like this. I'm not really sticking it in there permanent now, but I'm thinking right in that area. So I got to run this all the way over to under the passenger seat. I'll probably have to pull all this trim stuff out to see where I can tuck the wire in. So far, this is kind of going easy. I'm just it's push, getting squished right in there. It's it so there. easy, like it's meant to be. Yeah, so now I'll pull this, this piece out. Under the carpet. And then from here, uh, might be an opening in the carpet, but under here I can pass it through too. 
All right, so I did find an opening in the carpet on the other side under the seat. So here's the wire where it comes through, goes under the carpet, comes up under the driver's seat. I'm going to snap this back. This truck is a royal pain to do this. <laughs> Finally got the wire fished you know, under the carpet, under the driver's seat, under the center seat, under the passenger seat, so it's just out of sight, basically. So when I do get new trucks, I can just grab the wire and pull it out. Right? <laughs> Well, this is all we got left. And that plugs in right here to the controller port. And then the microphone to plug in here, which I'll worry about that last. I just want to make sure all my wiring can come to this point before I, you know, hard mount anything. Right. So next is going to be the antenna. Antenna plugs in here. So now I got to pull down the roof liner because I, what I like to do when I put these mounts in, because you got to drill through the roof. There's always cross supports. And the antenna is pretty stiff. So I like to find in the roof where that support is and mount it close to that support. Ideally, I would put it in the exact center of the roof. I don't want to um, you know, like hit a tree branch or something and have the antenna bend and buckle the roof. Right, right here, it seems like there's probably a support in there. So I'm going to I'm guessing I'm going to probably mount it somewhere in here. It's my guess. So I'll pull down the roof liner, at least on this side, just so I can see in there. And um, drill my hole. Is that all you need to pull down the roof liner? Oh, you need to run wires, don't you? Right. I'll, I'll drill the hole, and then I'm going to feed the coax or the antenna through the top, inside, and then pull it through. And probably run it down the down inside through. of this pillar here to underneath the passenger seat. Gotcha. All right, so I've taken a bunch of stuff apart here. We got like, you know, these handles that go up here by the door. There's one over the driver or passenger door. I got both those pulled down. I got this piece pulled out. There's a piece back here pulled out. So kind of time consuming, but not bad. But now the roof liner should start to drop. You do kind of got to be careful because there's your side airbag. Oh yeah. <laughs> But all I want to do is just see up in there, and then, you know, that way I don't want to accidentally drill down through the liner, too. Right. So this is looking up between here. Like, here's the headliner. Here's the roof of the truck. I just stuck my light in there. Well, you probably can't see, but there's a support to the left right where I'm pointing, and then there's another one kind of forward there where I'm pointing. So what I'm going to do is go up on the roof and find the center side to side and just drill down in. I'm just gonna go right between those two supports. So here's the antenna mount that I'm gonna use. It's called an NMO mount. So on this end, what you do is you drill a three quarter inch hole in the roof or 19 millimeter, and then you pass the coax down through. So if like this is the hole in the roof, you're gonna pull it through, it's gonna come out flat like this, and then this screws on to the top of it. So what you're doing is you're sandwiching the roof between this threaded piece and this flat piece. So when the antenna is not installed, all you see is this on top, and you can see it's not very, very tall. And to waterproof it from rain, it has a rubber O-ring inside there. So once you tighten it down, which you don't have to go crazy with it. Right, it's just no ring. That's all you do is just tighten it down and it's sealed. So to drill the hole, I think I'm going to use this step bit which is another reason why the headliner needs to be pulled down because three quarters inch is, you know, like this last step here, so. Yeah, we <clears throat> don't want to damage the headliner. Yeah. Okay, so I was comparing underneath, came up here, measured between these two ribs, and I used some soapstone to just make a little mark where I'm gonna start drilling, so. Here we go. Yep. Fingers crossed. pretty good clean hole. I just need to, you know, get the shavings. Get the shavings out of there, but I mean, it's not rough or anything around the edges, so we can start feeding the cable through the coax. Okay, it's drilled. 
clean some of these shavings away. We're gonna shop back them up, but so this, all this does, the coax just fits right down in the hole. And then with the O-ring side down, let's screw this on here. All right, so that's snug. Now I'm just gonna put a wrench on it. I mean, that's just hand tight. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a wrench on it and just kinda snug it down just, just a little more. All right, finally got the coax routed. Got everything put back together. So I ran the coax inside this center column all the way down to the floor. And then there's an opening in the, the carpeting here. It goes up under the seat. So I just pulled it up through there. So I've got all this extra coax. I'll cut this down, but I'm not going to cut it to the exact length I need just in case I reconfigure things in the future. So I'm going to have to solder on the PL259 connector. But I'm going to put the antenna on the roof just to make sure see that it looks like it's center. <laughs> Pretty centered. Look good. Yeah. Yeah, that looks like it's in the center. So now, I don't know if it's gonna give me enough clearance, but when I wanna back out of here. Lay that antenna down. It's gonna be close. Yeah, it's gonna be real close. If I have to unscrew the antenna and you know, to get out of here, that's what I'll do. I'm not gonna take that much of a chance. Looks good though. Now this truck will finally be yours. I don't recognize your truck unless it has a ham radio antenna on it. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, so I got the end of the coax stripped and the braid folded over. This should be its own video on how to do the PL259, but it's so boring I decided not to record it. <laughs> yeah, it's stripping wire cable. Yeah, stripping and stuff like that. So anyway, in order to have enough heat to solder this connector, I had to buy this as a, a Weller 260, 200 watt soldering gun. It's the only thing that I could do this with. A regular soldering iron just doesn't have enough heat to do it. So what I need to do is fill these four holes. There's holes around the edge here. I have to fill those with solder because that's where the braid is and then I have to fill the center conductor and then we should be good. Okay, right, so I have this MFJ external speaker I'm gonna hook up to this ham radio. Now keep in mind all this this junk is gonna be gone after our Wisconsin trip. The CB is not even mounted, it's just sitting. Same. So I got the speaker mounted here. There's already a screw here so I just used that existing screw the speaker in so this can still open the speakers there. I'm just going to tuck the wire in under here and take it back over to underneath the passenger seat. So now I got this little adhesive backed microphone hook because ham radio mics, well at least ICOM, doesn't have the button on the back. They've got you know like this little hook so it just hangs like that. So the best place I can figure <laughs> That's only happened like hundred times. times. Best fit place I can figure is just putting it right here. Yeah, and right there, it's not going to be in the way of this cabinet opening or his four-wheel drive uh, shifter. Yeah, and you know, like I said before, I want to make this easy to remove when I trade the truck in. Right. Yeah, I just got it. I'm already talking about trading it in. But I know the day is going to come when I trade the truck in. Right. So with this being adhesive, you know, I can just pull it off. And with the external speaker, not new, using any new holes, that'll just come out. Right. So, yeah, I guess I'll just stick this right here and then just run the microphone cable over, which I'm just using a piece of Cat5 to extend the microphone cable because it's the same exact size as Cat5. So that's easy. It works! <laughs> the easiest part of all of this. <laughs> yeah, that really was. 
So I got the PL259 all soldered, center pin soldered, the holes are on the inside are soldered. I've got the external speaker wire here, I've got the microphone cable here, power's already connected, so I think now I'm going to, I have an antenna analyzer, I'm going to connect it to coax. I know I'm not going to get an accurate reading being inside the garage, but right now I'm just looking for any dead shorts. That way, if I have to tear into it, I want to do it now. Right. So I'll get that hooked up and we'll see what it's doing. Okay, so I got the antenna analyzer set up, connected to the antenna. And at 144 megahertz, it's showing SWR about 1.2. Went up to 148, still just over 1.2, maybe 1.3. So I'm expecting, once I'm out of the garage, that will go down. I'm looking right now just to make sure it's at 50 ohms with a low SWR. If the SWR was pegged, that would tell me there's a dead short. So I'm going to get everything mounted, put together, and then once we get the truck out of the garage, I can check that again to make sure that it's an acceptable SWR. If it's this good, with these conditions, <laughs> then I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure that it's going to be even better once we get it out of the garage. Okay, I'm going to bend this fold this down and see if I can back out of here. I'm going to go slow. Yeah, because I'm not at the best angle to be able to see if he's going to hit something. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch it best I can anyway. Alright, so the truck's out of the garage, it's picking up, I've just got it scanning some public safety stuff, it's picking that up. The SWR's fine, across the board, so. Overall? Success. Great success. Great success was had today. <laughs> yes. I'm happy with it. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Got it, to spend some time in the garage. It was a real pain, I'm sure it's a boring video to watch, but I guess I'd rather watch somebody do it than me do it again. True. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Yep.